Not too many people know that Southern Ontario has one conservation area and a whole section of the Lake Huron shoreline, which is home to a venomous snake. That's right, guys. Canada has a snake known as a Massasauga rattlesnake. And truthfully, this animal in the right circumstances could potentially kill you. However, that's not what this video is totally about. In this video, we're gonna go over facts that the public should know about the species of reptile. We're gonna go over where specifically this rattlesnake is living and what you should do if you ever find yourself in that area, how to protect yourself properly from rattlesnakes. So without further ado guys, this is gonna be a great video. Stay tuned and let's get right into it. Our Massasauga rattlesnake is actually a pygmy rattlesnake meaning that it doesn't get as big as the other species of rattlesnake. The maximum that this species typically is reported to grow out to is 24 inches, with an average size being around 18 inches long. So 24 by guessing is about that, 18 is more like that. So it's not really a massive snake. Something people should know about the snake as well is that there's only ever been two recorded people who have died by getting bitten by this rattlesnake species. It is worth noting that most both of them did not receive the necessary medical attention and the last death was over 50 years ago. So in general this is a rather timid species of snake that typically is not looking to harm us and if it does it's just a really wrong place at the wrong time kind of thing. One thing that you should also know about the pygmy rattlesnake and just rattlesnakes in general is that the bigger the snake the better. Now let me explain. Typically an adult rattlesnake, if it bites you, it's kind of cautious actually and it's not likely to inject a lethal dose of venom into you. Uh, however, the juveniles, the juvenile rattlesnakes, the baby rattlesnakes, they haven't quite learned that skill yet. So if you get bitten by a baby rattlesnake, you're in a lot more danger potentially than if you got bitten by an adult one. So when it comes to rattlesnakes, the bigger the better. Their venom is hemotoxic, which means that it attacks your red blood cells and could cause tissue damage and other problems. So it's a really nasty thing to get bitten by. So you may ask me, okay, obviously I understand that. What am I supposed to do to avoid ever getting bitten by a rattlesnake? So Parks Canada actually has some great suggestions, which I will show here. But uh, my own summary of it would be that you want to keep your dog on a leash at all times. If your dog is free roaming, it's a lot more likely to get bitten confronting a rattlesnake. If you see a rattlesnake in your travels while you're hiking down the trails, like give the animal its space. As Steve Irwin would say, don't muck with it, right? Just back away slowly and calmly. When you see the rattlesnake, rattlesnakes are more of a timid nature, not an aggressive nature and they definitely do not want to bite you and it is their last resort. Another great tip is when you're hiking, try not to put your feet and your hands in crevices without first checking what's inside that crevice, perhaps even using a stick to do so. There's other great suggestions here from Parks Canada. Uh, I totally recommend you do your own research on it, of course. I'm not a scientist, I'm just a random dude on YouTube, but uh, that's basically covering the topic. So you may wonder to yourself, Okay, where exactly in Southern Ontario are there rattlesnakes? Because I would really like to know. So there's a, a little bit of a big population along the shore of Lake Huron. But when I talk about Southern Ontario, I'm mainly talking about where most people live. And they don't really, not too many live up in cottage country. They live more out here in our cities. So the main two populations, which I feel people need to have a greater awareness of, is a population out near Windsor but there's a conservation area out near Port Colborne known as the Wayne Fleet Bog. And they're very much confirmed to be in that conservation area. I had to wonder to myself, why out of everywhere in Southern Ontario, does the Wayne Fleet Bog still hold on to a population of rattlesnakes? And the answer I got from doing research was it basically came down to hibernation habitat. They depend on bogs, swamps, bog mosquitoes, bog-like environments to really help themselves get down there. And since the Wayne Fleet bog 
is the largest undisturbed protected swamp environment in all of southern Ontario, it only makes sense that they're still there to this day. So if you're anything like me, you're wondering, okay, how common are they in this park? Like if I'm just hiking down the trail, would I run into one of my travels? Is there, are they just everywhere? Are they extremely rare? And you know what? I'm wondering that too. So I say, let's go to this park in person and check it out. An hour and a half drive later, we've arrived. So I'm just at the trailhead now of the park and I'm about to make my hike down to search for Miss, no, not Mississauga, sorry, Massasauga rattlers. But uh, I'd just like to point out something to you guys here and I really want your opinion on it as well. Now there's basically four signs here at the start of the trailhead. There's one which goes over the history of the park. There's kind of like a welcome to Wayne Fleet bog conservation area sign which just gives a bunch of uh quick ecological details that make the park unique there's one uh which recognizes the donors which have helped to uh, establish the park i suppose and there's just a general map of the conservation area you know what i think maybe it's just me but i think there's a sign missing if we have endangered pygmy rattlesnakes, Massasauga rattlesnakes in this park. And the main way that people get injured or hurt from rattlesnakes is a lack of awareness for them being present. Shouldn't we have a sign up saying, caution, rattlesnakes live in this park, use care. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Uh, drop a comment down below. Do you think there should be a sign here just warning people about the endangered population, pocket population of like rattlesnakes in this little park? I sure think so. Uh, let me know guys down below what you think. Do you think they should put up a sign just kind of giving the public a heads up about it? I think so because like there's a lot of hunters that'll be here in the evening hours of course and no doubt there's probably been a mom who's taken her young kid for a walk down here or whatnot, right? I think there should be a sign up just warning people. Like, I know the animal's not really that dangerous when we look at statistics and the nature of it, but I think people need to be warned about this danger noodle, you know? Anyway, let me go know what you guys think. Let's continue on with our hike. I think I'm just going to try and be quiet and listen for any kind of... Oh, this little guy jumped and almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> oh, I almost had a heart attack. There he goes. So you see, something like that would be potentially dangerous because it's, it's basically uh, a shelter for a potential rattlesnake. Any kind of wood that's been long and stretched out or very flat like up against the ground is potentially where they could be hidden under. Speaking of which, let's leverage it over and take a look. This one seems clean. Let's tip this one over too and give it a shot. It's snicka snicka snicka. Nothing. Now, one thing myself personally, I always get scared of whenever I'm in any kind of swamp-like environment, no joke, is quicksand. I know what you're thinking, what? Like, Ontario doesn't have quicksand, does it? Well, I'll put it this way, maybe not quicksand, but definitely is quick mud. So right now, I'm a little sketched out over this ahead of me here. That's my tripod there, and it's just going into that like butter. I don't know if I'm going further down this trail, guys. Like, this is bubbling even a little bit. Not worth the risk. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna try that other trail, and we'll see if we get any kind of action there. But if not, I give it a good look, you know? Here's snaky, snaky, snaky. Now, when you're out in rattlesnake country, there's one thing you always wanna make sure you do before you head out into the bush. 
and that is you want to wear clothing that makes it more difficult for a rattlesnake to bite you. I'm talking about steel toe shoes and perhaps tough pants like jeans or even tougher than jeans but definitely not shorts right we, we want to protect our legs and our feet from getting bitten so from far away far away let's tip over some of these and see if there's an 18 inch rattler underneath one of them not that one when i was in australia the friends i've met there they told me the number one place to be scared of is the edge of farm fields because that's where the boys and the snakes like to hang out everything else there you can pretty much anticipate but not the snakes oh there was a frog under that one a little frog under that one that's probably a bad sign <laughs> thing is now I'm down the other path and it's nothing nothing but tall grass don't know how I feel about it guys I think I'm gonna turn back and uh, I checked out the park and the bottom line is if I wanted to see if it was so easy to run into a rattlesnake here that you could just casually go to the park and find one the answer for now anyways appears to be no uh, so there you go guys this is the last refuge and all of Southern Ontario that still has a population of venomous snakes, which are native to the area. And I truly find that very cool. If you guys want to see me continue this topic further, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, if there's perhaps other times of the year, which you guys would like me to come and try, let me know. Uh, this is a, a new topic I'm trying to branch on to. And I truthfully found it very cool. Found it very cool. And uh, I hope you guys did as well. I hope you found this video very informative, entertaining, and exciting. And if you did, don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button down below. Because I'm always making videos like this. And you're not going to want to miss out on future content that's to come. So without further ado, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And take care.